Easter gamma grass, and you can see it in there with an association of other plants, and you can tell how well protected this bank is, this riparian habitat. Um, and then he mentioned switchgrass, and he wasn't able to bring it up in the stroller, so I just wanted to show you a switchgrass plant, but if you look where this has been scoured out, look at the soil that this one plant has managed to, to hold on to. That's just how strong these roots are. And switchgrass also has a stability rating of nine. Um, and so that's where these, right here, with these having the high stability ratings, um, it's, this will go a long way towards helping us out. When we get these plant associations along with the large wood out in the floodplain areas, um, that's what actually helps slow down the water. It helps sediment trap, uh, get trapped. And then when that sediment gets trapped, we can grow more vegetation. And slowly over time, that's what you'll hear us calling the riparian sponge. And what happens is we get a lot of water stored out here in the floodplain, and then that gives water back to the creek over time in the form of increased base flow. So when you hear us talking about the riparian sponge, that's kind of what we're talking about. And I know people have mentioned how important wood is. Um, it might look awful, but it actually helps to dissipate energy much like uh, vegetation does. It helps anchor the soil. And it also captures sediment. And Steve is standing up here, if you see the inset, he's standing on a log that's actually been buried by sediment. And so as these logs get buried in our stream bed and our stream banks, it kind of acts like rebar. It sort of reinforces the bank and strengthens it. And so it's important not only in the stream bank, but out on the floodplain. You know, Bill mentioned, you know, way up on the uplands, what happens up there. Our vegetation on the uplands, and, and as we get into our floodplain, um, these large wood, it's just as important. You can see all the sediment that this is trapped, and all that's going to slow that water down. It's going to allow for more plants to grow. And oftentimes, as we get these branches and things that are falling down, when plants come up under them, it acts like a nursery. It keeps the uh, deer and other livestock and things like that from eating these plants, and it helps us uh, grow more plants, which in turn you know, dissipates more energy. And so when you see something like this, the tendency um, most of the time is for people to think, yikes, that's ugly, it's terrible, it's a hazard, I've got to get it out. Um, but really, when you look at the same place, you know, in the spring, it's doing its job, it's helping to keep the stream stable, it's captured more sediment, it's let vegetation grow. So wood is a very important component of stream beds. Uh, and then uh, the question was asked, how do you establish plants on bare rock? And it's amazing to think that these plants can become established on bare rock, uh, but it's happening all over Texas. And like right here, you can see this one plant, the sediment that's, that's trapped behind it. So as that traps sediment, then another plant will grow, and slowly, slowly over time, we build up that riparian sponge. And that's what's happening right here. And as we build that up, we'll be able to have more base flow to feed back to the stream over time. So it's just a real quick kind of um, background on large wood and uh, sediment dynamics. Uh, this, I just wanted because it's, such, it's been such a terrible um, past two weeks and looking at all the destruction, um, I thought I'd show a, a success story. Um, and this was a pretty hammered habitat, virtually no riparian um, area to speak of whatsoever. Michael, that's a lot what your look, bank looks mm -hmm. like right now. So. <laughs> and this is on the Nueces River. And um, you might hear us talk about hindrances to recovery, things that are happening that um, are keeping that riparian area uh, from, from becoming healthy again. Um, and in this case, there were two hindrances. There was uh, the motor vehicle driving in stream beds and then uh, cattle grazed down in here. And so when um, the motor vehicles were outlawed from the stream beds, this landowner said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fence my riparian habitat off and, and see what happens. So we removed two of them. We no longer have cows or motorized vehicles, but you can see we're starting with basically no riparian habitat. And so a year later, we're starting to get some, and, and this is all riparian species kind of coming in. We're starting to get a little bit of, of regeneration and one year later, this stuff is chest to almost head high. Uh, in 2010, this stuff got up over our heads, so just three years later. Uh, and nothing was even planted. Um, so then by 2011, it just didn't rain at all. And it was a terrible drought. But drought for riparian plants is actually not as devastating as you might think because their root systems are adapted to these fluctuating water levels. So they're chasing that water table. And as they go down and grow their roots, 
they're developing this basket of kind of um, uh, constructive sort, sort of material helping to uh, strengthen that stream bed. So then in 2012, it did rain again and the river's looking good and we've even managed to have some vegetation grow out into the channel, which is okay, that's, that's gonna dissipate energy. And so by 2013, it's, it's just looking great. I mean, the difference between when we started wow. mm -hmm. and when we finished is just phenomenal. And it's still growing strong. Um, they did flood out there. And I didn't put these pictures in. Uh, but it got up and got all out into here. And um, after the flood, you can see the sediment that's deposited. A lot of the younger trees kind of laid down. Some of them are kind of popping back. And while we don't have, you know, this is sycamore and, and things like that, y'all will have some of that around here. Uh, this, if, if this system had cypress, it would slowly be growing up within that and these other trees would be protecting it. So just wanted to leave you with, with, a, with a happy story. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, with gravel bars like that and, and back in the background and just imagining mm -hmm. thousand year old cypress tree piles back there, would it be beneficial to move those piles out into the gravel bar to no, create think, a dam? You know, where so. they fell is kind of where the water deposited it. And so it's probably in a good spot to be for capturing sediment. But out here, I mean, the, the small, the switchgrass and the other things that have come in are gonna hold things in place until those woody plants get, get there. It's really the association of all the plants together. So, but yeah, I, I think the wood out, it's only gonna help slow things down before it gets to this to help, you know. I mean, we've got uh, situations yeah. like that where there's traveling bars of gravel that move down. But, mm -hmm. You know, somewhere right. might need to be stopped if people were working in conjunction with one another to mm -hmm. halt all this. Right. If, uh, and that's the, the key is really working with neighboring landowners, allowing the right kind of plants to come in because slowly then, as uh, you march up and down the river, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's where you get the biggest bang for your buck is everybody kind of managing in a similar pattern.